Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Welcome to another video. I'm with my amazing friend Demi tonight and we've just finished making a video where I compare the 35mm to the 85mm to the 135mm lenses when it comes to portraits. If you want to watch that video then I'll link to it above. But I'm just sort of walking back to the car now. I thought what we could just do very quickly because you might be able to see the sun has set so we've missed now the best of the light or we didn't miss it because we got the light but now the light has gone so we can't really use any good natural light anymore because it just doesn't exist but what we can do is create our own good light using off-camera flash so that's what i'm going to do so this is the scenario that we're in here basically it's just a field with no decent light but we do have these sort of like tall pieces of corn i think it might be i don't know and that is what I'm going to use to light up and then shoot through. And I'm going to light Demi with the Magmod Magbox Pro 24. So let's crack on. So this is the field that we've got. As I just mentioned, the natural light has gone now in terms of the actual sun. So we're not going to get any more direct sun. We might get a bit of colour in the sky over there, but even if we do, it's, it's not going to be great because the sky has just no contrast in it whatsoever. So this is a situation where it's just a, basically a empty field. But what we do have is this sort of area of corn. Now this could be quite cool bokeh. I'm hoping it's going to be if we light it up. So what I'm going to do to start off with is just shoot using natural light, just to show you what we, what we could get if we don't have any off-camera flash. And then I'm going to introduce off-camera flash and the Magbox Pro 24, and then we'll start building the shot up from there. Just to show you the difference between natural light and off-camera flash. Here we go. So I'll put you about here, Demi, if that's okay. About where I am there, if that's okay. So I'm on the 85 mil. And let's just, first of all, just shoot natural light. Now I'm gonna put my Kelvin my manual white balance up to nine and a half thousand Kelvin because it's quite cool light now, but we can make the light look a bit warmer by cheating and you're shooting with a very warm manual white balance. So this is gonna be the best that we can do just with natural light. So I'm at ISO 400 and my shutter speed is at one over 200. Beautiful Demi. Again, I'm shooting through the corn that I'm going to be lighting up, so it would be good for a direct comparison. Beautiful Demi. So again, those shots were taken on the 85mm wide open at f1.8, and that is probably as good as we can get if we're just relying on natural light. So let's now introduce the Magbox Pro 24 to light up Demi. So I'm just interrupting this broadcast because <laughs> I, I just tried to say, you, I'm going to cut it all out, but I can't say Magmod Magbox Pro 24 in a very natural way. So let's see if you, Demi can. <laughs> Sorry Demi, I know this is not in your contract. <laughs> Ma Magmod. Magmod. Magmod Magbox <laughs> Pro 24. <laughs> she nailed it. Magmod. Magmod. Oh, I just forget it. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm just going to, yeah. We're just going to call it the Magbox Pro 24. Sorry, Trevor. So we've now set up the Magbox Pro 24. I'm using the Godox X2T trigger. And the reason I love that is that you can put a speed light, or in my case, a GoPro, onto this. So you can use off-camera flash and have a camera on the flash at the same time. And that's really useful if you want to maybe use off-camera flash during dancing at a wedding, but you also want to put a bit of fill light as well. So you can use both. So it's really cool. That's the Godox X2T trigger. I'm going to set the speed light to, I'm going to guess at 132 power. Let's just see what that gives us. Shutter speed is at one over 200 because I don't want to use high speed sync. I'm going to go put my ISO low. We'll put that, say, at 100. But what I am going to do is put in a half CTB gel. This is going to make the light on Demi much cooler. So to counteract that, I'm going to increase my white balance. And that will mean that the whole 
shot, the whole scene is going to get much warmer. So let's just pop this in. It's really easy to use gels in the mag box. Just need to open it up and in it goes. That just clips in and that's already done. So now let's put my white balance up to the maximum of 9,900 Kelvin. So I'm going to go to 1 100th with my shutter speed. Still teaching wide open, that's beautiful. At f1.8 and my ISO is at 100. Beautiful, and we're getting really nice light on Demi now. That's perfect settings. And obviously, this is just one light source, just the mag box shooting through this foreground bokeh. But because the light is now really dropping, we're not really going to see any of this in the foreground because it's not being lit, basically. In fact, the light is dropping even as we speak. So I'm going to increase my ISO to 200. So yeah, the light on Demi is beautiful now. Really good. Remember, there's also that half CTB gel in there as well. Beautiful, Demi. Ask you to wash that on the left. That beautiful. All right, so that now is just using one light. What I now want to do, try and make the shot more interesting, is light up this area. So let's do that by adding in a second speed light. This will be speed light B. This, just as is in the Magbox Pro 24, this is a Godox V860 speed light. Let's just set this to this mode and then B. Okay. Now at the moment, I'm not going to put anything on this speed light. It's going to place it there. We'll see what happens if we put this on 132 power, I would say. So both speed lights are on 132 power. Yes, so this is working well. It's a bit too strong at the moment, so I'm going to drop the speed light power. So B goes down to 128, and I've also moved it a little bit further away. Inverse square law means that that's going to just make it a bit darker. Yeah, that's nice. Everything's a bit bright at the moment, so I'm going to just drop my aperture from f1.8 to f2.5. That's basically going to just lower the perceived flash power. Beautiful, Demi. And what I'd like to do is is cover, you can see the mag box in the frame, so I'm going to use all this grass in my hand to basically cover it up. Three, two, one, Demi. Really good there. I'm going to stay where I am because we're getting good exposures. And just with that wrap around you this time, actually, Demi, if that's all right, so I can make sure I get it. And that's it, just looking towards that light. Really nice. I'm going to put the grass underneath Demi a little bit as well. Stop doing that. Good. Just experimenting here with what the foreground bokeh looks like. You can see here, as I go further back, the foreground bokeh is a bit more defined. Not really a fan of that, so it's about just getting the right distance between you and the foreground bokeh. Yeah, that's good. I think this is the perfect distance. So again, let's do before. I'm gonna try, I want just more stuff here, so I'm gonna see if I can put like a wig on it. Okay, just a test, I mean. Yeah, even better. So you see, I basically just filled in a lot of this blank space by just doing that. And then I'm trying to shoot through one of the gaps. Yeah, good. We're nailing these now. Beautiful. Really good. And what I'm gonna do, just before we finish, I, I, I always like to do, I'm just gonna change my lens from the 85 mil to the 135, just to see what that gives us. But what I hope you can see already is that when the natural light has gone, and it's now getting really quite dark, it doesn't matter. We can create our own light using off-camera flash. This is why using off-camera flash, it's almost like a cheat code because you don't have to worry too much about the weather anymore because if you don't have the natural light, and I'm based in the UK, we very rarely do have good natural light, but I can always create it myself. So let's just see what the 135 does. I'm standing a little bit further back. Not changing anything else settings-wise. Yeah, really nice. Let's just open this lens up to 1.8. I'm gonna drop my ISO to compensate to 100. Three, two, one. Really nice. Really good, Demi. Just time, just wrap around you again for the very last photographs we're going to do. Stunning. Beautiful. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the off-camera flash. And now let's see what we can get with natural light. 
and then we can make a direct comparison. So I'm already having to put my ISO much higher. So my ISO is gonna to go to 1600. My shutter speed is gonna to go to 200 and I'm still at F1.8 and this is natural light. Good, thank you Demi. So there we go. That is the reason why I love using off-camera flash and why, as I say, it's almost like a cheat code because here are the shots that we had in natural light and here are the photographs that we had when we introduced off-camera speed lights. And as you can see, even though the light has gone, we can create really nice light, not only very easily, but very quickly as well. It takes literally seconds to put up the mag box and even quicker to set up this light, which is just literally a bare speed light on a light stand. So as always, a massive thank you to Demi for looking so amazing as she always does. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could please hit the like button because that really helps. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel and let me know what you think of these photographs in the comments. Do you prefer the natural light ones? But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Thank you very much, Demi. So let's now introduce the Magbox Pro 24. So let's now introduce the Magmod Magbox Pro. T Why can't I say that? right? So let's now introduce the Magmod. <laughs> so <laughs> good God. So let's now introduce the Magbox. Let's just say. So let's now introduce the Magbox Pro 24 to light up Demi. <laughs>